Can you go check it out, Dan? <laughs> I rolled my eyes. It was almost six in the evening and I'd had a long day at work. Oh, I couldn't go out after that. The prospect of an hour's drive there, two hours of shopping and an hour's drive home was what? not appealing. Fair enough, Darren. Team two Darren hours right now. shopping? I turned around and booked it back to the tent, closing it behind me. I tried to remain calm for my child as I explained what happened to my wife. I could hear him over and over. Oh shit, a ghost. Oh shit, a ghost. In between me and my wife. Oh, you yeah, twatty bastard! Look at that! That's a ghost! <laughs> that poor kid's like, shitty, cunty, twatty ghost! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 55. Hannah! Hannah! <laughs> Did you know. do that on purpose? No, swear to God! I didn't, I'm losing my mind! Oh, right, well, that's what I'm doing. No, well, no, yeah, no. But, right. but, but, episode 56 of Ghost, Ghost Hands. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> I've got a cold, I'm trying, don't make me laugh. Because if I laugh, I'll piss. <laughs> I coughed today on the sofa and I let out a wee. Oh, God, what is it with Only you a little bit. You besmirching sofas, well, left, right and centre. Well, why have I ever done it before? Just fucking rubbing your chocolate orange uh, in. Oh, chocolate orange. Wazzing besmirching. On. Yeah, wazzing on. This one was just like shit old leather, though, so that was fine. Shit old um, leather? And, you know, it wasn't like... Is it that wasn't a enough, colour? Shit old. It wasn't enough to go through my pants and, and trow. Right. But it was... Because <laughs> <laughs> these are like wipe clean. What? The way you put your leg up, you're like a can can dancer, oh, you. Yeah. Oh, listen to me. Be flexy. Oh, listen to me. I could have joined the circus. Yeah, that foot nearly reached your face. <laughs> got very little body, <laughs> like very, well, very like short body. Certainly not little body. She's got some boobies. Oh, tits are. But boob boobs and ass. We've got some guests in today. Some, they are looking very. <laughs> Have they yeah, got anything they? to say? <laughs> How are you? How Thank are you? Thank you for being a good host, Hannah. Thank you for okay, having me. Okay, no, and then it got weird. Um, host in body wise. Anyway, uh, yeah. So I've had a cough, and it's been that annoying that I have just had a little wee. Not enough to get through the trousers, but enough to make me feel seventy-five. I mean, cough by by name, by nature. Yeah. So I had to go and sit on the toilet and have a cough. <laughs> yeah, it's, so it's just... part of your it brand. It's really attractive. Kofsky. Okay. Um, How are you? I'm I'm well, you know, the Christmas season has begun yes. in earnest. Certainly I went to yes. um I had a vegetable Wellington and a pub. Excuse me. Yeah. What do you mean? I don't know why I did that. Should have got the turkey. Was but... it minging? Yeah, it wasn't great. What was in place of the steak then? Steak? What? Well, because <laughs> a normal <laughs> Wellington has a fillet steak. A normal. Not a fill no, not a fillet steak, uh, uh Beef. A, well, it's a steak. <laughs> okay, um, hang on. Wait, no, wait there. I'm going to have to check what it is. It's a steak. I'm sure it's a quarter <clears> steak. The meat options were turkey, pork, beef, or you got the mushroom Wellington, and that came with all the trimmings. But then I don't know why I did that because I don't really like mushroom. And God, this is fucking fillet dull. Steak. It's dull. Sorry, fillet <laughs> steak. No, 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 no. I need to know. Right, fillet steak is in a is in a, 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 welly, a welly. So what was in place of the beef steak? Mushroom, spinach, feta, but all I could see was sp um, spinach and mushroom. And oh, I wanted I'm the cheese. Sorry. Yeah, the pastry was good, and I dipped that in the gravy and had my Yorkshire pudding. But you know, it's like, why did I do it? I brought this on myself. You should have had the turkey. I should have had the turkey and yeah. a side of cauliflower cheese. Oh, the cauliflower you know, cheese, the CC. Because I'm not. I don't care what you say. You can't <laughs> have a Sunday dinner or a Christmas dinner without a fucking cauliflower. Cheese. My mum once said, um, "Do you want to find the cheese powder then?" And I went, "I'm going to fucking kill you in your sleep." Whoa! <laughs> you do not use That's... cheese powder no. in my cauliflower cheese. No, you do not, Terry. No. But then she was like, "Look, I'm in. A, I'm a busy gal." You I mean, know? listen. And then I was like, yeah. "I'll do it." And she was like, "No, you make too much of a mess." So, but you know what? This year I am going to do my Christmas cauliflower cheese because my cauliflower cheese. It's outstanding. It's the least we can do by Stunning. living at home. No, it is. I should do the whole thing. I do like doing a Christmas dinner. We've said it before. Really? Only because I can get pissed while I do it. Yeah, I like that. As um, a la Keith. Just open the wine. Keith Chegwin. Start, What's you, his name? start your peeling. Who's the drunk Keith Floyd? Keith Floyd. Who's Keith Floyd? Is it Keith Floyd, that no. drunk chef? Oh, but then, no, I bet he does get up. Yeah, you, that's the whole point. You're like, 
It's snowing out. Well, it's never snowing, actually, is it, on Christmas Day? Here? It is around your parts. Oh, it was like a fairy tale, wasn't it? And I said it showed you the other night. Keith Floyd, yeah. R.I.P. What a, what, is what he a dead? wonderful piss head oh. who did like um, TV chefing and like he used to just like knock back He's the wine. And, yeah, it was great. Um, well, I'm really looking forward to that anyway, this show. Um, I have a lovely Hunt in the Wild story. Oh, do you? I think I, I think I mentioned it to you when I went to the box office. Oh, yeah. And I wandered in late and then this really smiley lady was like, here you go. Because I was about to say my name. I was like, oh, by the way, I've got a ticket. I'm just, and she just handed it to me. Oh. And it must have been on the system that like my name was there. And then she went, I really like your podcast. Oh, that's like, so nice. Oh, I nearly fucking fell apart. Oh, I would. I think I would at this point because How? I'm so sensitive. We're very sensitive souls, aren't we? Very sensitive. Um, other bit of news. We've had a gift. Oh, my shitting Christ. We've had a gift. Okay. Um, oh, and by the way. BTW, the person who commented on TikTok, oh, they only start the stories 23 minutes in. Yeah, yeah, we do only start the stories 23 minutes in. And that's because it's our fucking podcast. Yeah, exactly. You horrible. Who said that? I didn't, I didn't even see that one. Yes, well, I, I mean, was it that... was literally just a statement. It was a true statement, so I don't know if oh. I can really... <laughs> They're like, oh, well, FYI. But obviously, we do, start them, we do start them late, but that's because we can't start podcasting. Okay, okay. okay. This is a little gift from Becky's Boutique, who has sent this in to us. Oh, my God. Oh, it's a letter. Is that a, is that oh a story? God, it's a little letter. Oh, okay. let me read that out, okay? If it's a creep of the week. No, I want to read it. Oh, but it's my turn to do it. What do you mean? I've just opened it. No, creep of the week. Is it a creep of the week? No. Come. It just says, enjoy your... Was this the whole thing on the back? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi, ghost hunts. Hope you're well. Let me start by saying, love the pod and you ladies. So, so funny you get me through my work day. Oh, Here are your perfumes. So that's we, so um, kind, Becky. Becky offered us some perfumes and we, we are obliged. Because we love perfumes. Yeah, we do. We smell lovely. Um, apologies, it took a while. I was waiting. I was working full-time managing. Oh, no problem. A care home looking after two young sons. Don't apologise. Do not. You don't need to justify it. Six and no. just turned one. And running a side hustle time gets away from you. Anyway, in here is... Uh, nine one zero for Susie Baccarat Rouge four forty for Baccarat? Hannah. Baccarat Baccarat ru- Baccarat <laughs> Baccarat. There's a Baccarat in my kitchen. Um, four four zero for Hannah Mimosa and cardamom. Oh, is that what I have? And some that samples. Great. Honestly, Becky, you absolute oh, dream. Oh, that's very. She said, exciting. enjoy them. Feel free to follow me on Insta. Obviously, will. Oh, we I will. Follow, I follow Ghost Hunts and you both, so no prash. Anyway, keep doing what you're doing. You're amazing, love, Becky. Oh, thanks, Becky. You are the fucking. I best. can't wait to give this a sniff. Oh my god. Okay, there's yours. This is so exciting. Honestly, oh, I am. I'm obsessed with perfumes. Oh my god! Obsessed. Is anyone going to be interested in us trying out a perfume right no, now? No, I don't think so. Let's do that later. No, but I don't want to. Okay. I want to do it oh now. Oh my god! Look at these. A little, a little baggy. Oh, me and Susie are going to fight over those oh, later. Oh, how nice is that? That's so cute. Becky, thank you so much. Thanks, Becky. Um, and then, obviously, if you want to follow Becky. Get some oh, you perfumes. Should. Um, it's underscore Becky's Boutique. Well, I'll tell you right now because I'm going to sniff mine quick. Smelt, uh, smelt, spelt, B-E-C-K-I-E-S, Boutique. Oh. <gasps> is it lovely? Oh, oh my goodness, that oh. is gorge. Is it? I've already sprayed my current perfume, so I'm going to wait till later. I like mixing my perfumes. Yeah. Oh, that is lovely. That oh, is gorgeous. Oh, stunning. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Becky. What are those samples we've got there? Um, what are they? Oh, it says, it says here. It says. Let's have a look at them. What's happening there? Car- we, we should maybe move on there, shouldn't we? No, I want to know what they are. Carolina, Carolina Herrera. Got Tom loads. Ford. Those, Nero- oh, the Tom Ford one. Oh, the- that's the Neroli Paroli. Oh, lovely. Neroli Paroli. Neroli Paroli. Killian, Rolling in Love, one of my faves. Oh, Creed. Gosh. For him, Tom Ford Tuscan Leather, Lovely. I know Hannah loves. And then one million for men, absolutely love on a man, gushing. Oh, gorge. Ooh, that could be a little Prezi for Adam. Um, <laughs> QR code on, oh my God, this is so fucking wonderful. Amazing, thank you so much, Becky. That is a gorge. Please do get in touch with Becky because these are gorgeous little, gorgeous little perfumes. They are. Aren't they? Thank stunning. you, thank Beautiful. you, babes. Thank you, you so are much. stunning. Okay. Oh, and also, I wanted to read out something that um, on TikTok, you know, I posted that um, video of the story I told when we 
met with Danny Robbins, the one about the imaginary friend in the, yes. in the tent, the circus tent. Yes. So that prompted a lot of people to write in their own stories um, or like experiences. And this a, I, I just want to read this. Is quickly. this a creep of the week or what, what, what section is this? It's just me having oh, a chat. Just, okay. Jesus Christ. Are you okay? Like, what are we doing? I'm so confused. <laughs> um, so this is for, I think, uh, Kazarol. I'm going to go with Carol Kaza. Um, and she said, my daughter, from the age of about two, used to talk about a little girl whose name was Savages. Oh. Even the name uh, is terrifying. She told us she killed her parents and she didn't like me or my son. She went into quite a lot of detail about it. This lasted about two years. She said she was nice and kind to her, but lonely. How does a two-year-old even come up with that name? My son once said to my little girl, tell Savages I'm going to push her down the stairs. As a joke, he's 13 years older. And I was terrified she was going to do something. She said after a couple of years that Savages likes us now. Even now, she's nearly seven, she will still talk about her occasionally in a way you would about someone you haven't seen for a while. Wow, that's disgusting. <laughs> I know. Oh, vomit. I know. I'm Vom. like, the idea of a little, a little creepy ghost called Savages. Mm, kids are creepy. Yeah, they are. Wait, so I just thought stressed. I'd read that little little bit out. Oh, thank you for sending that in. Um, oh, and there was another one on... Uh, Shall we do tarot before we do stories? Yes, it was just it was just a literally like a tiny little message on. But you you're very clear that you want a bit of water. I want some water. Yeah, I need some water in my life. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Oh, four of cups. Four. We've had this. We've had this very recently. Oh, have we? Yeah. There, that's like that hand coming out, giving that bloke that looks a little bit like... Oh, yes. Keanu Reeves when he was younger. That was the one I didn't pick. Oh, that's weird, Remember? isn't it? Yeah, that is weird. Literally well, last... last week? Yeah, it was the one I was like, I was going to go for that. And wasn't that... Oh, no, that wasn't it good, says was it? it's a oh, sign it's of good. introspection and re-evaluation. It accompanies someone who is unmotivated or apathetic and in need of adjustment. <laughs> you need adjusting, I babes. do need adjusting, to be fair. <laughs> I'm in a big mood. Yeah. Okay. Um, there we go. How's gorge. That? Okay. Uh, um, but yeah, I, there was another little yes, message. Yes, do your story. So this it is It wasn't from... really a story. It was just, honestly, someone just, like, responding to one of the stories that we put up. Um, let me find her. Anyway, so, uh, when I find that, I'm sure I will before <laughs> the end of... The pod, but in the meantime, I wouldn't mind a little story Would you like time. A story? Yes, please. A story. <laughs> okay. okay. A few years ago, my wife and I decided to take a little camping trip with our then three-year-old son Blake. We went to a secluded campsite on the property of my friend Charlie's. Charlie had about a thousand acres and set up a charcoal barbecue outhouse, fire pit, and a little clearing in the middle of the forest. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? Charlie's a lovely Charlie, friend to have. gorgeous. He was let his friends use the site from time to time to get away from the hustle and bustle and communicate with nature, as he liked to call it. We got there mid-afternoon and we were able to set up our tent and sleeping bags, as well as get a fire going before supper. We roasted up some hot dogs and a can of beans and even mm. made s'mores for dessert. Classic camping cooking. S'more. S'mores. I think s'mores are fucking horrible. It's not for I'm me. I'm not a marshmallow I'm kind not of a marshmallow are you, I'm like, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to make me laugh. I'm, I'm going to piss. <laughs> I hate marshmallows and minging. I think marshmallows can get in the... F oh, I completely bin. agree. I absolutely... And when people put them in hot chocolate, oh, oh it's mental. No, 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 no. Have you seen in America in Thanksgiving, they had one of their desserts is sweet potato with marshmallows on top? I have seen that. And it's What's wrong. It's wrong. I was only recently told that it was a dirt dessert. I thought it was, it like was a, a dirt. <laughs> I thought it was like a side for the main. I was like, oh my god, imagine. No, do you know what? Marshmallows I, and that's gravy. just brought it back. Um, <coughs> I was served that, Lorna. If you're listening, I loved your dinner party. However, that was served because she did an American Thanksgiving. Oh, was and it we... nice? <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, I think it's fine not to have enjoyed that. That's yeah, a very. That's it, like a. 
she honestly like went all out spent about four hours cooking oh, this thing god and god love her but that was the <coughs> and also she wanted us to open up our minds to a bit like new cuisine absolutely but, and you, you have to try everything once completely but i um, do i would like us to start questioning but that um, was not use, the use of the word cuisine when yeah. it involves marshmallows yeah, yeah yeah not for so it's not for me <clears throat> After dinner, I took my son exploring around the campsite, showing him different types of trees, plants, and even the woodland creatures scurrying around. Aww. That's cute, isn't it? Squirrels. It's squirrels. He was, it's like a Snow White. He was having the time of his life. We stumbled up to the shed. Oh, fuck's sake. We stumbled up to the shed. Since Blake's favourite holiday is Halloween and he loves his scary cartoons, I decided to yell, Oh shit! A ghost! Well, <laughs> a star for effort. Yeah, exactly. Probably not great parenting with the cursing. That's why we can't have children. Yeah, that's true. I know, I know. I really shouldn't have sworn like that, but he was just so cute when he started running around going, oh shit, a ghost. Oh shit, a vampire. That's oh shit, a zombie. Um, his mother was definitely not pleased on that front. About a hundred oh shits more, we decided it was time <laughs> to get us all settled in our sleeping bags and get ready to sleep. It really was the perfect evening camping. Well, until it wasn't. <laughs> There's a shitting, cunting, twatting ghost outside your fucking tent. If we can call this episode <laughs> shitting, cunting, fucking twatting ghost, that'd be amazing. There's a whole hot, oh, oh, you twatty bastard. Look at that, that's a ghost. <laughs> and that poor kid's like, shitty, cunting, twatty ghost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me. Okay. Okay. I laid there dead asleep from the picturesque day we'd just had. I was suddenly jostled awake by my son repeating over and over, Oh shit, a ghost. Oh shit, a ghost. Oh shit, a ghost. And pointing at the front entrance. Mm -hmm. I tried to calm him down and get him back to sleep, but he just started forward pointing and repeating the words. I'm not sure if he was scared or maybe in a trance, but my wife and I could not get his attention. I decided this was enough, so I opened the flap to show him outside. I think open the flap is that really is, funny. I was going to laugh. <laughs> you can't. <I> like <laughs> open the flap! <laughs> Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Since I distinguished the fire before bed, it was pitch black out there. I grabbed my trusty LED flashlight and shone it outside, bouncing, bouncing, bouncing through the thick trees ahead. I showed my son nothing was there and moved the light all throughout the trees. I turned to look at my son to get his reaction. His blank facial expression loomed off in the distance as his finger moved across the tree line, all well rhythmically saying, Oh shit, a ghost. Oh shit, a ghost. Oh God. shit, a ghost. Sounds like he's possessed. I know. Over and over again. Blake stopped his hand for the... Mm -hmm. Blake stopped his hand far to the left of the flap. <laughs> <laughs> he pointed right towards where the shed lay. He then put his, down his hand, eyes fluttering as he tried to get his bearings, giving his head a little shake. Blake proceeded to lay his head down, give, saying that he was tired and went to sleep. We were obviously a little freaked out, but you know how kids are sometimes. They're weird sometimes, so we just went back to sleep and didn't think about it. My wife woke me up a little later because she could hear some rustling going on outside. I got up and put my, but <laughs> my boots on. I got up and put my boots on to go and check the surrounding area in case a big animal was running around. I exited the tent, leaving my wife and son, and went to check around. I scanned the tree with my flashlight slowly walking around the tent before I was in front of the shed. I walked up, peering through the broken door. The air suddenly becoming stale and cold, an iron-rich scent filled my nostrils. Oh. Oh shit, a ghost. Rang out from the tent as my eyes darted to the corner of the shed where the looming shadow began to move towards me. I turned around and booked it back to the tent, closing it behind me. I tried to remain calm for my child as I explained what happened to my wife. I could hear him over and over, Oh shit, a ghost. Oh, shit, a ghost in between me and my wife. The fabric started shaking around us as we huddled close together. It violently rocked back and forth, threatening to come down all around us. A scream rang off close by. We stayed together. Even my son stopped. My son? Even my son stopped shouting out. I wasn't sure what was doing this, but I knew deep down that it wasn't human. At least, not anymore. The shaking of the tent and screams continued for about an hour. Thank God it was summer because the sun eventually started to rise. As the light began to seep through the seams of the tent and the shaking stopped, all was quiet around us. From outside, I suddenly heard, Oh shit, a ghost. Because it sounded exactly like Blake. My son giggled. <laughs> 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 and 
then Charlie's voice rang out asking where we were. My wife and I looked at the in-between space between us, but he wasn't there. How could he have got outside? My head spun around. I didn't know what was going on. I went to the front of the tent and I looked outside. There was nothing there. I looked around frantically, trying to see any sign of where my son was. Nothing. And then suddenly, they broke through the trees. My son was giggling and running, jumping into my arms, and Charlie looked confused. Probably because we scared... We... Oh. Probably because we scared... Oh, my God. So that's, let me start the sentence again. I'm losing my mind! They broke through the trees, my son giggling and running, jumping into my arms. Charlie looked confused, probably because we looked scared to death. I asked how this was even possible. How did he have our son? From what he says, I dropped him off in the middle of the night because my wife had hurt her leg. I told him to bring him back in the morning and help me get her back to the, our car. My stomach dropped to the floor. This did not make sense. I'd been holding him all night. The noises, the shaking, none of this made any sense. Was I having a nervous breakdown? To this day, we still don't know what happened. But I can tell you one thing. I am never going camping again. So wait. So the tr so Charlie's like, no, no, your wife and son came to the house. No, he said he went to the house and said, can you look after him while, while, for the night? So... So, okay. <laughs> so the so daddy, daddy goes to Charlie and goes, take my son. Take the son, yeah. And I'm going to go back to her because she's hurt her leg. Bring, drop him back off in the morning. Oh, so whatever fucking so creepy is it, kid is... So is it doppelgangers? Is it creepy kids? It's both. What is it? What's going on? Is it monsters? What's happening? Oh, so it's, we it's don't know. double Blake. Double Blake, yeah. And double man. Double daddy. Double, Double daddy. daddy. Oh, that's, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the episode title. Sounds like sorted. a new McDonald's burger. <laughs> I okay, would I'll take a double daddy, please. Order the fuck out of double daddy. Oh, that is... Oh. Minging. Oh, Minging. I can't even. <laughs> did I tell you, speaking about camping, you know when I went to Abney Cemetery, did I tell you I thought I saw a raccoon? No. Yeah. There is where's a... Abney Cemetery? Where, where's this? When was this? So, you know, a while back, me and Tom went to do that cemetery walk. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw an animal, right? And not just any fucking animal, because the only animals around that cemetery are pigeons and rats and squirrels, right? And I saw this fucking thing. And I'm not joking. It was like, it was like that big. Like, That's fucking huge. It was huge. And I was like... Do we what? have? Do we even have raccoons? It scamp no, but it scampered up a tree and it looked like a raccoon. And then I was like, "What did I just see?" And Tom was like, "Yeah, yeah look, that's a squirrel." And I was like, it "Wasn't a squirrel?" No, I hate it when people do that. Cause you're like, "Well, why was it the size of a fucking dachshund then?" Yeah, <laughs> dachshunds, <laughs> a sausage, <laughs> and like, why? And like, it was huge. And then he didn't believe me. And then I, I basically think I've seen the beast of Abney Cemetery. And I is that a thing? Well. No, but I think it is now. This is how urban legends start. Oh, uh, my God. So what we should do is go back to Stoke Newington. Yes, please. Go to Abney Cemetery and yes, hunt please. the beast of Abney Cemetery. Right. Because it's there. Yeah. Let's get, I, little, not... let's get some little nets. It was well cute, though. I'd have it, it as a, I'd have it just a pet. Was it like the one in Pocahontas? That was a raccoon, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, she was it? very sweet. It was a very big, nice, flowy raccoon. I don't think you raccoon. can have raccoons as pets. I think they can be quite dangerous. Well, when... this one looked lovely. When... Oh. That's it was nice. cute. Are you sure it wasn't a big skunk? It could be. Again, are these native to Stoke Newington? I think skunks are, in are English. <laughs> I don't think they are. I think all of I these animals we've mentioned do not belong in London. They don't belong in London, though, but oh, fucking hell. Well, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Brexit means Brexit. Um, right. I've got a story. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, lol. <laughs> the light switches in my house are on the wrong walls. Oh. I said O N like O N G, didn't I? They're on the wrong. I said on. <laughs> They're on the ong walls. The light switches in my house are on the wrong walls. Right. I've lived in this house for the past twenty-three years. Just like the past eight thousand nights, as I was going to bed, I reached out to turn off the light switch in the stairwell. The one right at the top of the stairs, on the left-hand side, as I go up. Except it wasn't there. I stopped and looked down. My hand was pressed against blank wall. I turned around and saw the switch on the other side of the stairwell. No. Huh? This is so weird. Had the switch always been on that side? It had been so long I never really paid attention to where exactly the light switch was. It was pure muscle memory. Reach out, turn off the light, go into my bedroom. I looked down. Oh. I was holding a freshly laundered sheet and pillowcase in my left hand. That stopped me from turning off the light. Instead of switching hands, my muscle memory just told my brain, hey, go ahead and turn off the light with your other hand. 
silly brain. There was nothing wrong. I opened the door to my bedroom and started pulling the fitted sheet over the mattress. I pulled the cloth straight, straightening out the wrinkles, neatly tucking the corners underneath. I repeated it four times and with a sigh I got up and went into the bathroom. I reached to flick on the light. Blank wall. What the? I extended my other arm. After a second of fumbling, my fingers found the switch and flipped it on. I scowled at myself in the mirror, at the reflection of my bony hand frozen on the light switch. I'm pretty sure the light switch was on the other side, next to the towel rack. Not there. I walked over to the counter and pulled the bobby pins out of my hair. Then I pulled it all up into a ponytail, securing it with a neon green hair tie. I reached down for the drawer to pull out my toothpaste. Except my fingers grabbed empty air. I looked down to find the drawer pull a few inches lower than I expected it to be. Jeez, what's wrong with me today? I muttered under this my breath. This is really creepy because this this would feel, this feels a bit like gas, like you've been gaslit by yeah, someone. Yeah, yeah. Because you'd never know. You don't know. Just a few inches. Like if you, I was just thinking then, if I knew where I, yeah, if I knew where I, like upstairs on my landing, I, I don't, I couldn't tell you now. Yeah. But I would go up there and just do it. But I, I can't tell you now where it is. But I think that couldn't tell you what wall it is. The actual film Gaslight is about this exact kind of thing. Yeah. It was about um, a light on a wall, and he was like, it was always there. Was it a film? or Was it a theatre show? Because if it's a film, I'm going to go and watch. I it. think it's film. Someone's probably going to correct me. That I'm wrong. But I think it's about this... The husband tells the wife that the light switch has always been somewhere and he keeps moving it oh. to make her go mad. And that's where the term exactly, gaslight yeah. comes oh, from. Oh, yeah, of course it is. Yeah. So what this a is a similar head. kind of fucking thing. It is, it's similar. Have, have you so, seen... hang on. Is this on the other on the front wall or is it literally just a bit below? Well, now the drawer is just a bit lower. But the, the light switch is on the other side. Yeah. Oh, my God. And have you seen that film with um Scientologist, Elizabeth Moss? Uh, the Invisible Man. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God, one of the best films. Isn't it? It's one of the best horror films it ever. It actually gives me chills it's thinking so about it. It's so good. It's so good. It's literally one of the best. It's, it's Elizabeth Moss, a salientologist. A salientologist. Salientologist. <laughs> Is she into sales? Yeah, babes, she's unfortunately. No way. Yeah, I think she's about it quite a lot. No way. That's so sad. Yeah. She, um, she's excellent then, to be fair. And oh, she's film fantastic. Is so scary. I think Scientologists make really good actors. Well, Tom Cruise. Well, exactly. I, I mean, I you can't think of anyone else. Because you're just a bit like, well, John Travolta. Is he a Scientologist? Yeah. No. You need to brush up on your Scientology Hall of Fame. Don't I just? Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be my own work. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Great. <clears throat> oh, sorry, what were you going to say about that film, though? It reminds you of it. Well, it was a similar kind of thing, wasn't it? It was about, like, being gaslit. Um, wasn't it? it wasn't it about a gaslighty ghost? Have I got that wrong? Well, he he was he was a oh twat, no no he, he wore the um, well we he should give it away. Mm, mm, nah. <laughs> the end. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, anyway, do go and watch it if you want to like scary films because it is one of the best scary films. Oh, it's so Jumpy, good. It's scary. It's great, and you really feel for her. She's such a good yeah. protagonist. Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. Um, have you seen the Fall of the House of Usher? That's on my next list. I started, and then I heard a couple of people say it's dog shit. Oh, what so did you make of it? I was a bit confused. I it, it struck me as a poor man's American horror story. And I haven't seen that. So maybe you I should watch American horror story. You should watch the haunted it's about haunted house the first one. Yeah. You, that is great. And what is it just this uh, episode by episode it's just a the, the standalone each, story. Each season the each season is a standalone story. Yeah. Oh. So you can start on any season but one is very very good. Okay. And it's about ghosts. Well, I should watch it then. You should watch it then. Um <clears throat> okay, back in. I'm now imagining this to be Elizabeth Moss in this story. Oh, yeah. I look down to find... She does that face very well, doesn't she? Like... Yeah, she, she she is fantastic. Very good. She does, like, confused, scared well. Yeah. Like, I've but... lost my dog. Hope he's not dead. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, oh, that could be... You know yeah, I, mean? I know. Mm. And that takes, like, years of like, yeah. training. We're like, like, she does that confused face yeah. real well. I'll just put a tampon in. Oh, I hope there wasn't one already in there. Yeah. Oh, my God, I think I've got TSS. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She's fucking brilliant. So, go the Scientologists. Yeah. Well done. Um... Okay, I looked down to find the drawer pull a few inches lower than I expected it to be. Oh, jeez, what's wrong with me today? I muttered under my breath. I grabbed my toothpaste out of the drawer, squirted it on my toothbrush and furiously brushed my teeth. 
I bent over the sink and cut my hands, filling them with water. I sucked it up, swishing and spit it out, straightened back up. Huh? Over my shoulder in the mirror, the fitted sheet sat bunched on top of the mattress. My heart dropped. I definitely put that sheet on. Then I frowned. Did I? Or did I just think about doing it? I turned around staring at the mental. bunched <laughs> I turned around staring at the bunched fabric, the cute little green polka dots distorted with the wrinkles. Then I shook my head and walked over to the bed, flapped the sheet in the air, then lined up the corners, pulled it taut, tucking each corner underneath. Looking good. I walked over to the windows and closed them, locked them. <coughs> Uh, I walked over to the windows and closed them, locked them, pulled down the blinds, then pulled the curtains over them. Without the light of the moon, the room was pitch dark, save for the silver... I always say silver and sliver the wrong way round. That's just a little glitch Why, in my there, brain. <coughs> is, that, is there a sentence that says silver slither? That's no, it's cool. just I see sliver as silver and Thank silver as... Anyway. Um, without the light of the moon, the room was pitch dark, save for the sliver of golden light spilling out from the bathroom door. Leaving the bathroom light on so I wouldn't trip over myself, I sat down on the bed and turned on the desk lamp, pulled my Kindle off the nightstand and opened the novel I'd been reading. Some dramedy about two very different women switching bodies. I read for several minutes... <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. I read for several minutes, but then something caught my eye. The mirror. In the full-length mirror, across from the bed, I could see my reflection. Blankets cosily wrapped around me, cup of water on the nightstand, Kindle in hand. Except there was something horribly, horribly wrong. Oh, there's something behind. There's something behind! My hair was down. No. I put my hair up in a ponytail. In the bathroom. Yeah, no one goes to bed with the hair down. Right? I was sure of it. Otherwise, I would have got my hair wet in the sink when I brushed my teeth. Unless, maybe I was absentmindedly putting it back down when I was reading. The neon green hair tie sat on the nightstand. I grabbed it and quickly put my hair back up. Then I stared at the mirror. My reflection stared back, eyes wide. You're just tired. You've had a hell of a day, hell of a week. The presentation at work, fixing the crack window in the basement all by yourself, you just need a good sleep. I reached over and turned off the lamp. Darkness enveloped me and it felt somehow too dark. Usually there was a light from something, even if it was just the blinking white light from my laptop indicating sleep mode. But this was just pure darkness. Thick, heavy darkness, like a fog filling the entire room. Go to sleep, you just need to sleep. I cuddled up to my pillow, closed my eyes, and began to fall asleep. My eyes shot open. The light. I'd left the light on in the bathroom, and now it was off. I pulled myself up out of bed. Hello? Is anyone there? Oh, good idea, Hannah. <laughs> oh my God, it's Hannah Moss. Shit, it's you. It's not Elizabeth anymore. Oh, ooh, that creeps me out. That's, I don't like that. That's really scary. weird. Oh my God. Oh, good idea, Hannah. Announce yourself like every victim in a slasher movie ever. Groping in the darkness, I felt for my phone. I'd left it on the nightstand, which should have been a foot or two to my right. But as I continued oh, to no. feel... My hand only fell on empty air. Where the hell is the nightstand? You're gonna feel like a twat as well, aren't you? And you're like, oh fuck. Yeah, <laughs> that creeps me out though, because I'm like, what if you just like, Put, like, like a like, hand a, 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 or a head? head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm scaring myself now. Oh, I've got goosebumps. Oh, I don't like that. Yeah, like what a about head. that? A head. Cutting a head. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Something me. like warm, like a body. Yeah, like a, a neck. Oh, that freaked me out then. Oh, ah. God in heaven. Ooh. Jesus Christ. <sighs> what? What? What that happened? That was weird. Something went past the window what then. Happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Something like, went what, into the studio. Spotify's haunted. Oh, fucking Spotify. Okay. Oh. But as I continued to feel, my hand only fell on empty air. Where the hell is the nightstand? I walked forward with slow, halting steps. Then my toe collided with something. I hissed in pain, but reached down and finally found the sleek, smooth metal of my phone. I turned on the flashlight, and my blood ran cold. No, not the flashlight. I fucking hate the flashlight. No, oh my god. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Wait, let me get, I need to get, no, hang on, okay. Okay, so everything's dark. She's got the flashlight. 
She's out of bed. She turned on the phone. She is. She far turned on the torch. My blood ran cold. Oh no. My bed. The nightstand. It was all on the left side of the room. What? Not the right. I stared at it. Like my... a mirror. Like a mirror image. Guess so. I stared at it, my heart pounding in my chest. The white light jittered across the wall as my hand shook. I turned around towards the bathroom. But I was staring at windows. The curtains closed tight. I whipped around and there was the door to the bathroom on the other side of the room. What the fuck? I ran to the bedroom door, turned the knob, swung the door open and raced down the hallway. The stairs, they didn't lead down, they led up. My flashlight followed the wooden steps as they went up, turned 90 degrees at the landing and then continued upwards. At the top there was a shut door, a door I'd seen a million times, the door to my basement. A dream, this has got to be a dream. I pinched myself, I screamed, I tried to force myself awake, but I was still standing in the hallway, the hallway that led up to the basement door. I raced up the stairs and opened the door, or tried to. It only opened a few inches before the chain lock caught. I thrust my entire weight against the door, pulling the chain taut, but the door wouldn't open any further. Let me out! Light blinked on, on the other side of the door. And through the crack, I could see something. Something familiar. A hallway with a cuckoo clock, cream-coloured walls, an opening that led to a small wallpapered kitchen. It was my house. And standing in the kitchen was a woman. A woman with dark hair pulled back with a neon green ponytail holder. Me. She held a toolbox and a garbage bag. Something like glass clanked against each other with each step she took. Then she disappeared round the bend towards the garage. Help! I screamed. Help me! But no one came. No, if I asked myself to help my, I wouldn't do it. Would I? <laughs> Be like, mm, half off. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of work. I tried calling the police. I've tried calling my mum, my friends, anyone. It never goes through. I, <clears throat> it seems like I have some sort of internet connection though, and I'm ah. Uh, it seems like I have some sort of internet connection though, and I'm not even sure where this will be seen. But I hope someone will see it, and I'm hoping you can help. Oh my god, I hate that. A light, a torch in a dark room. Mm, oh. I thought I thought it was going to like light like up. A, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Like a little demon sat on the oh, bed. What, what film is that where there's a can where she's holding a candle, and then something just comes out in from the shot, well, into the shot, and it's like and blows the candle. Oh out. fuck! Is that the Awakening? No, I don't know. Not... Is it the others? That film that's a is scary so film. scary. It's really scary. Mm. Me and Asma have just watched. Um, Leave the world behind. Have you seen it? It's that no. new Netflix one with Julia Julia Roberts, Ethan Hawke, Kevin Bacon. All the all the, oh, what's yeah. it? What's the like? It's like an apart. It's like End of the World. Oh, I vibe. love End of the World. You should watch it. It's, Adam hated it. I thought it was quite good. Oh no, I'm I'm, I'm no watch it. It's good. I love that. Very interesting. Um, but that that started to scare me. <laughs> okay. Oh, a lovely creepy. That was a great thing. I can't believe her name was Hannah. Oh my god. Hannah. Help me, help me, Hannah. Let's check I haven't got a story about fucking paedophiles. Um, So, everyone, just check that your doppelganger isn't asking for help. If you do hear yourself going, help, just help. Well, weirdly, actually, I have just... I was just listening to the Uncanny episodes. Is there a new one? Doppelgangers. No, it's from two weeks ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you listened to it? Yeah. And you die, don't you? You're supposed to die. That's it. You're dead. Well, that's what they say if you see your self. If you see your doppel- doppel- yeah. Oh, God. Although that weird case of them seeing their own like reflections driving towards yeah, them. Yeah, it's so spooky. It's super spooky. I haven't spooky. finished listening to it yet. I think I've got more, like 10 more minutes left on it. But that's oh, like, ooh, I didn't know. Like just the premise of it, of like seeing yourself And waving. that, and that um, oh, he was the, like the, the, mm. the cynic on it is like, well, no, they don't call them cynics, do they? What do they call them? Non-believer. Non- the non-believer. The non-believers. Um, was like, yeah, it's, it's probably just coincidence. I'd be like, get fucked. It's, it's a form of gaslighting. It's, it's a gaslighting episode. It's gaslighting. Today. She's moving my light switch. Yeah, that's what she's doing. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. The Stanley. You might have heard of it. It's a hotel in uh, Colorado, most famous for hosting a stay from Stephen King decades ago. Turns out he likes it so much he ended up using it as the inspiration for a book you'll have almost definitely heard of. The Shining. The Shining. Ooh, the Stanley. The story goes he came in the winter. <laughs> Hang on. 
The story goes he came in the winter when the staff were already prepared to leave for the colder months. He courted a few drinks in our huge empty hotel while the bartender served him some ghost stories. A little while later, voila, here's Johnny. People come from all over the world hoping to find a ghost. My job is to tell you where to find them. I guide tours around the campus telling people to rehearse, memorise stories, stories about women who laugh and dogs that curl into your bed at night. And I'm good at it. I started last autumn, but I took to the job very quickly. I'll make scary faces, I'll make eye contact with you. I'll use old passages guests don't know about popping out in front of you in places you don't think I could be. But a couple of weeks ago, I stayed overnight at the hotel for the first time. I worked a double shift, the room was available and I had to open again the next day, so it just made sense. I had fun. Hang on. It was fun. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. I, ha- I had yeah, a lot of fun. That sounds like lots of wanking. Uh, yeah, I put on uh, <laughs> TV channel eight eight eight. Is that the is that the is that the the sugar babes? Is that the sugar babes? <laughs> what what are they called? Babe station. Well, <laughs> don't, get, don't get confused. Sugar babes confused with the babe station. That's unfair. <laughs> the sugar babe station. I mean, they change the women just as much. I imagine. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm rotation. <laughs> nice bit of topical. Fucking comedy, Hannah. Babe Station and the Sugar Babes. <laughs> Take me back to 2001. <laughs> okay. Where was I? Okay. It was fun. Uh, the rooms are old and there's a small gap at the top of the doors. At any other hotel, there'd be complaints, but at the Stanley, it's part of the experience. You'll hear it all. Every creak of the floorboards, every door opening and closing, every doorknob twisting. It's all too easy to let your mind turn an insomniac neighbour into a ghost. And let's be honest, no one comes to the Stanley for a good night's sleep. I haven't gone home since that night. Most of the employees are teens from Colorado looking for some extra cash on the weekend, so turnover is high. When my bosses saw me... um, When my bosses saw me as the reliable worker I am, they gave me a standing offer to work whenever I want. I've worked every day. The last building we visit in my tour is a tiny shambled building at the back edge of campus. It's not really supposed to be part of the experience. Often, I'll skip it entirely, but on the tours when we've moved a little too quickly and I needed something to fill in the last few minutes that the guests have paid for, I'll pop in. It's a creaky old building that's been under construction for the entire time I've worked here, even though I've never once seen the crews come in or out of it. Inside, a collection of old antiques welcomes you into the narrow entranceway from its only windowsill. Past that, a single hallway runs two rooms, one on each side of the hallway, until it meets at the end in one locked hallway. I don't, I can't really imagine that in my mind. (laughs) Broken old appliances and heaps of lumber and sawdust littered the old rooms. It was really nothing special, but the air pressure inside is strange, and sometimes it causes the doors to move, which is usually enough to warrant an ear-splitting shriek or two. I use that to make up some fun, spooky stories about it. The one that seems to perform the best is about a ghost who will lock the door from behind, from the outside. If that happens, don't panic, I'd say, tapping my radio. All I have to do is call and someone will come and let us out. There was a little truth to that. I don't have any key to this building, nobody ever locked it anyway. Funny enough, though, someone did lock the door at the end of the hallway. I asked about the key once at the risk of having my secret tour stopped, discovered, but nobody even seemed to know what I was talking about. I always used to wonder what was in there, and that and that would be so... Oh, fuck! sake, this is written. I always used to wonder what was in there. That, okay. I always used to wonder what was in there. What... <laughs> <laughs> I always used to wonder what was in there that would be so important. My best guess was some kind of valuable movie memorabilia. But I was wrong. Sometimes, did I say memorabilia? Yeah, you said something <laughs> weird. And I was like... Oh. A memorabilia! 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 I was wrong. Sometimes on my tours while guests were taking pictures, people would tell me I had disappeared from their photos. Uh-oh. And it was true. And a lot of the pictures people showed me, you could see a portion of blurred half transparent finger or portion of my face or my clothing hiding in the background Mm -hmm. or my (laughs) sometimes I was just going to say it again or my clothing hiding in the background or my clothes hanging in the background Mm, or my clit Um, (laughs) it's like I'm losing my mind sometimes half my body would be there and the other half would be vanished it's easy enough to explain some cameras are still not so great at capturing motion but guests at the Stanley live for that stuff so I usually play into it It wasn't easy to explain the first time I phased through an object. I was reading, and when I tried to turn the page, I missed. That was all. A mild private embarrassment highlighting a severe lack of depth perception. 
A silly and forgettable moment until I missed again a second later. Then again. No matter how many times I tried to pinch the page, I would watch the tip of my index finger pass right through the paper. He did. I blamed it. He fucking did. He did. I blamed it on sleep. Sli- uh, fucking hell. <laughs> I blamed it on sleep deprivation at first, but the more it happened, the more I struggled to find rational explanations. Forks, hairbrushes, makeup, more and more things were falling out of my grasp. Through my fingers, through my hands even. Even culminated two mornings ago when I couldn't... Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me. I'm (laughs) ill, that's what I'm going to blame it on. Everything culminated two mornings ago when I couldn't grab the doorknob to leave my room. I convinced myself I was losing my mind. Convinced all I needed to do was focus harder, just grab the damn doorknob. But each time my hand would pass through it like it was a mist. In a moment of frustration and exhaustion, I screamed and banged my fists against the door. I nearly passed straight through it. I nearly toppled down the stairs just outside my room. I looked back. The door was still closed. I couldn't believe it. I wouldn't. I didn't want to. Ghosts aren't real. I told my boss that afternoon that it would have to be my last for a while. I needed a break and I needed time away from the hotel. Some fresh air, somewhere warmer for a while. My ability to grab things came and went throughout the day. I started encouraging the guests to open the doors themselves. They liked it. It added to the scare if they had to lead themselves through the passages. They had no idea it was because I was too scared to find out if I could open the door myself. That evening, at the end of the last tour of the night, we ended at the old rundown house. It was the first time I had been there that day. It's more common for my tours to end there at night because I'm antsy to be done for the day and rush to the later tours. I hadn't been able to grab anything that entire tour. I was letting the last few lingering tourists out of the building when the door at the end of the hall caught my eye. I couldn't help it, I had to know. My heart beating faster as I took my first step towards the door. I don't know why. I'd been in that room a hundred, a thousand times, but this felt different. Was I about to discover the last secret of the Stanley Hotel? Did I even want to? I took a few more steps, passing the first doorway on the left. The door slammed shut. I screamed. Damn it, pull yourself together. I resisted an impulse to slap myself for no other reason than to imitate the cartoons I watched as a kid. I passed the next doorway, braced for it to close at any second. Nothing. I glanced in as I passed. Piles of junk appliances and strips of plywood plastered flickering silhouettes of imaginary monsters onto the drywall. My eyes turned and focused on the last door. The room was silent. Not even, a, not even a single creak from the floorboards beneath my feet. I reached the door and raised a hand, outstretching a single finger towards the top lock. The tip passed right through. <laughs> the tip. I held in a gasp and pushed my finger further into the doorway. Soon my entire finger vanished behind the metal door. I couldn't resist. I pushed further. My hand followed and then my wrist and my arm as far as I could manage. I took a step. My foot passed through the wall. <laughs> My foot passed through it as well. Another step and I was through. The room was nearly completely dark. I could make out a few shapes, a series of lumps that looked like piled boxes around the floor. Something stuck out in front of them. Something very long. I bent down closer, my eyes slowly adjusting to the dark. I could make out a little more. Legs. Human legs. My stomach caught in my throat. I followed the limbs up higher with my eyes. The torso slumped at a severe angle, trying to collapse fully to the floor then I saw her face and screamed not because she was dead but because she was me yes I knew it dead knew it. Pe- dead ghost dead ghost dead ghost it me <laughs> I'm, just, I'm losing my fucking mind you are um, losing your mind and that's okay I love a I love a haunted hotel it's one of my favourite things yeah. Colorado in Colorado um, I, Hannah I think we should go to Colorado and oh, go I'd love to go to, to Colorado. the Stanley Hotel. Wouldn't that? Do you think it's still going? Do you think it's still there? Still going. Still, still, do you think it's still going? I'm going to check. Still going. The Stanley Hotel. Wow. Good the question. Stanley. Colorado. I've got a bit of a mad American story. Go America, for it. America. America. Um, it does. It still exists. Does it? Yep. Yeah. Colorado. It looks fucking, it looks amazing. What it also looks like, it looks just like oh, the hotel yeah. in the show. Oh, I'd love a whiskey there. Isn't that gorge? Yeah. Look at that big Suze. Yeah, no, we, oh, that's, our, skiing. that's our destiny gorge. there. Bit of skiing. Look at that and some thunder on that picture. Oh, oh gorgeous. sweet Jesus. What, where is Colorado? Is that a state or a place? I think it's a state, Colorado. 
Colorado. Denver, Colorado. Yeah, I think it's a state. So it's it's like a whole state, is it? It's a whole big where, fat where state. Where is it? What? Where's Colorado? Yeah, is it on the west or east? I'll tell you now. Da, 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 da. But a music here would be nice. Where's Colorado? It is kind of mm, southwest, I'd say. Is that southwest? Is that southwest? Oh, it's like sort of bang in the middle, isn't it? Well, ish. I'd call that. I would say that's a bit more southwest. Colorado. Yeah, it's sort of in the middle if you sh shunted it a bit shunted left and it a down. Bit, yeah. It's kind of, yeah, it's a couple of states over from um, California. Um, but it looks great. Okay. I'd love to go there. <laughs> it's between Utah and Kansas. That's I just fun, can't wait it? till we do a tour of America. Okay, it also, if you know, if you work at the Stanley Hotel or you've ever been to the Stanley Hotel, can you let us know how we can go there? Because I would really like to go. Yeah, and tell find... us if you have any experiences of going. Was Ooh. it creepy? Or is it just a lovely place and, and it's spenny? Either or, I'd like to go. Okay. Um, are you ready for a bit of a mad one? Hit me with your rhythm stick. My wife received an invitation to a store opening. I don't think I'll see her again. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Darren? Did you know they opened a Target in Owingsville? Oh, apparently Target's amazing. I've never been, but I really like What is Target? I think it's We've a said bit this before. Like... Is it our Primark? Uh, no. Or Asda? No, no, no. I think it's much better than that. I think it's a cross between... Target. I think they have... I think it's like Costco. Oh. I think it's got oh, fucking everything right. in it. Yeah. But I also think it's a little bit like TK Maxx. And if it's a cross between those two, then, then yeah, it Target's amazing. fucking amazing. Yeah, okay. I, you know how TK Maxx has like loads of nice fun things? Yeah. Like candles. I, if, I, if there's a candle somewhere, I can't leave without buying one. Mm. I'm all about the smells nowadays. Yes. Perfumes and the candles. Yeah, Becky, you've nailed it. Smashed okay. It. Darren, did you know they opened a Target in Owingsville? I fucking hate this bitch. My wife, Deborah, asked me excitedly, grab the car keys. Let's go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> why Why is she from Clueless? <laughs> Can you go check it out, Dan? <laughs> I rolled my eyes. It was almost six in the evening and I'd had a long day at work. Oh, I couldn't go out after that. The prospect of an hour's drive there, two hours of shopping and an hour's drive home was what? not appealing. Fair enough, Darren. Team two Darren hours right now. shopping? They didn't open a damn Target in Owingsville, I replied curtly. Only about 2,000... they got the same voice. <laughs> they did not. <laughs> no, he's the jock and she's like the cheerleader. Yeah. Um, only about 2,000 people live there. Why in the hell would a multi-billion dollar corporation... <laughs> a multi-billion dollar corporation open a store Amazing. in the middle of the sticks in a town that isn't big enough? Well, listen, you can get a McDonald's anywhere. That's so weird you said that. Why? Because this is how the sentence goes. Why in the hell would a multi-billion dollar corporation open a store in the middle of the sticks in a town that isn't big enough to support a McDonald's? Oh, that is weird. Yeah, it's like you yeah, literally no, took the words exactly out of my mouth. Right. Yeah, you should. If you if there isn't a Mackey's there, you absolutely can't shouldn't open a Target because Mackey's is the is the base. Yeah. Okay. So, like, a, a, a McDonald's is a, a sign of Target appreciation. Well, it's kind of like if there's a Mackey's there, like, yeah, fine. You know, a business could survive. Right. But if there's no Mackey's there, don't touch it with a goddamn barge pole. Oh, God. Pole. I mean, you're very Team Darren. I Thank mean, you. yeah. I'm very on Darren's side. Yeah. Well, like 6 p.m. He long speaks day. sense, doesn't he? Would you go home and then go off shopping? No. But clearly, Deborah's <laughs> no. just a bit bored. Deborah could be bored, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, just get, on, just get on online and start putting things in your basket there. Squealing wood on tile penetrated my ears as she pushed the bar stool away from the kitchen counter. Her footfalls approaching my chair were heavy like a pouting child's. I should have known better than to start an argument with her about Target. Yes. She dropped something from above me. A glossy red mailer advertisement sailed through the air over the top of my head. I looked down at my lap to see the familiar red and white logo. The cluster of red vested employees smiled at me from the shiny cardstock. Target would like to welcome you to our newest location in Owingsville, Kentucky. Bring this ad to the register for an additional 10% off your first purchase. <laughs> she worshipped that damn place. 
We lived in Lexington, Kentucky, and she made the rounds between all three. The clearance queen, she called herself. Oh. Deb would buy clearance items by the carload from any target within a reasonable drive. I bet she's so ready and for And resell Christmas. them on Amazon. Oh. Yes, yeah, and Deb's smart. Oh. Sure I would use it all for Christmas stocking fillers. That's <sighs> just... I, I couldn't be asked for that. Retail arbitrage, I think she called it. Don't get me wrong, she made some decent money with it. We were middle-aged and empty nesters oh, when I she started. Oh, I see them as middle-aged. I think it's because I did the voice of a 21-year-old um, yeah. outrageous twat. Yes, you did. Um, <laughs> they're empty nesters. Her and you did call them a cheerleader and a jock. <laughs> yeah, but in their 50s now, yeah, so it's but changed. I saw them as literally like having those outfits on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's called like Brock and she's like <laughs> yeah. Casey. Chad. Casey. Um, her entire life had been devoted to raising the kids. When Dustin and Jessica left for college, she struggled a bit. Stirred around the house like a caged animal. I pushed her to find a hobby. It was a few years until I would retire. Most of her friends worked. Dustin and Jessica are basically those names that you just said. Yeah. They're the ones who are like, Jessica! Oh my God, Mom! Jessica! Mom! <laughs> um, that's when the target clearance sprees started. Owingsville is almost an hour away and there are three damn targets. <laughs> Owingsville is almost an hour away and there are three damn targets here in town. I said, irritation building. Why do we need to drive out to the middle of nowhere to get what we could find in town? My wife went back to the kitchen and started washing the dishes. Every moment, every movement every she- moment. Every moment. Every moment. Every moment, every moment. Every movement she made was exaggerated to show her displeasure. Uh, I do that. If yeah. I'm if I'm annoyed, I'll just smash about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And make yeah, yeah, yeah. it known. Oh no, me too. I'll just like oh, kick and smack. Yeah, it. smack a cupboard. Yeah. Um, every movement she made was exaggerated to show her displeasure. Mm. Cabinets closed so hard they were just yeah. shy of a slam. Yeah. Glasses hammered on the counter so hard I expected to hear them shatter. Absolutely. She signed at least three times a minute. Sighed, I think it meant. She sighed. <sighs> Yeah. I wish I hadn't given in. If I would have just stood my ground, maybe everything would have been all right. Oh. Our family would still be whole. Oh, God. Police detectives wouldn't stop by the house every week just Jesus. for a chat. But I did give in, and I agreed to go. Oh, my God, what's going to happen? Grab your purse, put on your shoes. I have to push myself out of the recliner. It's not fair, really. <sighs> we can go, but no more than an hour of yeah. shopping. i got to work in the morning. So, we can't so he's not going to come back home till nine. We kept full around all night. She squealed with excitement and ran off to the bedroom. Why the hell did I agree to go? Also, why can't she just fucking go on her own? She needs... Um, Do you think she can't drive? Um, unclear. Did we, have we found out his name? Dustin. Isn't that their kids? Oh, uh, maybe. Dustin and Jessica. Oh, well. uh, yeah, we don't know their name then. Maybe he's the only driver. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. The drive to Owingsville was uneventful. NPR news stories played on the radio as my wife fidgeted with her cell phone. While I had been mildly irritated before we left the house, I was almost to a raging boil by the time we got to Owingsville. What's that? An hour's drive to the middle of the country, and my wife looked at Amazon listings the entire drive. We'd already reached the centre of Owingsville, and the GPS said there were still two and a half miles to go. From the overhead view of the map, the address was a good distance outside of town, headed towards Moorhead. <coughs> the location of the store was making less sense at the moment. Are you sure you put the right address in the GPS? I asked Deborah. She didn't answer, scrolling through her phone. Deborah! <laughs> I said a bit louder. She looked up at me and smiled. The sweetness of it cooled my anger, down to a dull simmer. I even felt bad for being angry. Her life had changed so much in the last year, and this was something she did to pass lonely times. Sweetie, are you sure you put in the right address? I really don't think this can be right. Deb leaned over and pulled out the cardstock advertisement from her purse and looked at the address. Reaching over, she pulled the GPS from the dashboard and punched a few buttons. Out of the corner of my eye... <coughs> oh, yes. Let it out. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see a confused expression consume her face. Yeah, she said. It's the right address. The weird thing is the GPS just corrected itself. It was down to two miles and jumped back up to two and a half miles. Still says it's straight ahead on the right, though. I wasn't concerned yet, but I was confused. The GPS clearly said two and a half miles when we pulled out of Owingsville onto the dark country lane. We'd been on the road for nearly a minute. It could have been a glitch in the software, but it still left me with an uneasy feeling. Mm. 
I wasn't concerned yet, but I was confused. The GPS clearly said two and a half miles when we pulled out of Owingsville onto the dark country lane. We'd been on the road for nearly a minute. It could have been a glitch in the software, but it still left me with an uneasy feeling. My eyes darted back and forth from the GPS screen and the darting yellow lines in the centre of the road. The mileage was decreasing as it should have and I felt relieved. Only a mile ahead, we would be there soon. I looked back at the road and looked for parking lot lights in the distance. You missed your destination. Please make a U-turn when able and head back two and a half miles. Destination. Your destination. <laughs> your destination will be on the right side of the road. What the hell? I said in a panic. Uh, the this G is most of my days. I do this all day, every day. Yeah. Try to find this fucking <laughs> like place where I'm supposed to go. <laughs> Owingsville. Um, the GPS had just said one mile only moments before. There was no way I'd driven a mile and a half past a huge department store on the side of a dark country highway and missed it. You gotta be kidding me. I pulled, I pulled the car onto the shoulder and made a U-turn as we drove back in the direction. What was that? Don't. As we drove back in the direction that we came, I, my heart fluttered with nervous energy. Something was wrong, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Was I zoning out while we drove? Was the GPS malfunctioning? Did the damn store even exist? Just a moment before I was going to tell my wife we were heading home, I could see an unnaturally bright light ahead in the wood line. The tops of the parking lot lights peeked over the top of the forest. I turned to Deborah to voice my concern, but her face was painted with a satisfied grin. I told you we'd find it. <laughs> She's a fucking dickhead. She exclaimed with excitement. We pulled around the tree line to see an immense parking lot in front of the brightly lit store. There were maybe three cars parked at the far side of the lot. The car returns were empty. It looked like no one had been there other than a few employees. You were all worked up over nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled the car into a parking space closest to the door. We got out and started walking towards the entrance. There was a motionless elevator music playing in the parking lot. Music. Is that what that's called, music? Is it? Yeah, I've recently discovered it and now I've, you know. Just oh, is that it, it? Use it wherever I can. Yeah, like any kind of hall, uh, hall? any kind of call hold music, elevator music, it's music. Oh, I didn't know. I thought it was just an expression. I, I thought it was like, music. Music, yeah. yeah. No, oh, cool. well, you learn something every day, don't you? So exciting. Uh -huh. um, I looked up towards the tops of the light poles, but I didn't see any speakers. None of the targets in Lexington played the cam music, and it filled me with a strange sense of dread. It was though it was it was it was it was, it was, it, it was as though it came from nowhere. Even the entrance to the building was strange. While most stores have an entrance directly on the center of the building, or two mirrored entrances on each end of the building, there was only one here. It was almost directly at the far right corner of the building. I looked to my left and saw the three other cars in the lot were parked all the way to the right. Maybe there was an employee door on the side of the building, but I couldn't see a walkway. There were four or five feet of grass between the parking lot and the edge of the building. Something about the exterior was off-putting as well. Every other store I'd seen was a cream or beige colour with a few red awnings and a red Target logo next to the store name. Not this one. The entire building was fire engine red. It reminded me of the unrealistically bright blood from the old 80s slasher films. Where there would usually be, mm, where there would usually be only one Target logo, the building was covered in them. Oh. Hundreds, maybe, all different sizes. Some of the <coughs> larger logos had smaller ones between the red and white circles. A few overlapped. The taller ones are like a uh, like a, a Target, a literal Target. Oh, are they? Are they? Yeah. They're oh, like I don't know. Target, I don't think yeah. I know Target. Yeah, like like a, oh, what's the fucking? I think it's called. It looks like a Target, like a Target board. Like a... Like with the circles. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like that. Oh, what's that called? Why have you forgotten that? What's it called? It's bullseye. No, bullseye. no. <sighs> it's, is it a target board? Target is it a, a dart? It's like a dart board. Dart board. Oh, honestly, today, mm. I think I'm fuck, I think I'm having a stroke. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I need to go to hospital. <laughs> well, all will be well. Um... <laughs> Stranger sir, some of the larger logos had smaller ones between the red and white circles, a few overlapped. Strangest of all, there was no sign that just said Target. Deb, something about this is weirding me out, I said hesitantly. Let's come back tomorrow during the day. Looks like they could be closed anyhow, there's not many cars. She stopped and turned towards me. The exuberant grin had vanished from her face and was replaced by a set of furrowed brows. Yeah. Her body was slightly rigid and her head turned slowly from side to side. We drove an hour to get here and you you nearly got us lost twice 
She said angrily. She is not grateful at all, this no. shit. No. Don't you think for a second, don't you think for a second we're going home. If you're going to act like an ass the whole time, go and wait in the car. Oh, rude. I was a bit dumbstruck. Deb was usually soft-spoken and sweet. Only a handful of times had I ever heard her curse. Never at me. She wants a target, baby. She wants a fucking target. She turned and went through the sliding doors at the front of the store. Hurt and angry, I went back to the car. For the first 30 minutes Deb was inside, I scanned the parking lot like a prey animal searching for a hunter. No cars passed on the main road and no one pulled into the parking lot. There was no motion that I could detect <coughs> through the glass. Uh, there was no motion that I could de de fuck detect through the glass doors into the building. Occasionally, a light would flicker in the parking lot, otherwise things seemed relatively normal. I tried to call Deborah once or try I tried to call Deborah once or twice but didn't get an answer. Halfway through a lengthy apologetic text message, I decided to leave her alone. She probably needed time to cool off and target bargain shopping was probably the best medicine for that. Mm. At some point I fell asleep. It wasn't intentional, but there's only so much aimless scrolling on a smartphone I can do before I start to nod in and out. Once I start to drift, an involuntary nap is always in my future. I'd been asleep for around 45 minutes when my cell phone... Jesus, that's not a nap. <laughs> full on 45 fucking minutes. sleep. Jesus. Um, when my cell phone began to buzz in my hand. I sleep for about 10 hours. Oh, well, Deb's taking a fucking time. Yeah, fine. Startled by the sudden motion, I looked down at my phone. There was a text message from Deb. I thought it was just Deb telling me that she was running behind, but checking out. Help me. The messaging was confusing. Did she want help carrying something to the car? Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. Help me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, Oi, help, help me. me. Yeah. Was there something she wanted my opinion on? I sent a reply. What do you need help with, sweetie? <coughs> no response. Three minutes passed. I tried again. You okay? Another few minutes and still no reply. I I'm getting worried. Do I need to come in? I waited for another minute, but she never texted me back. Unsnapping my seatbelt, I pushed the door of the car open and felt resistance and a loud smack. Looking to my left, there was a yellow car next to me. It hadn't been there when I went to sleep and I just slammed my door into the side of it. There was just enough room for me to slide out so I wedged myself sideways and closed my door. Bending over, I looked at the side of the yellow car where my door had made contact. There was no dent or mark. With relief, I stood and turned to head towards the door. I was started by an ocean of yellow cars. There were dozens of makes and models, but each vehicle in the lot was yellow. Almost every single parking space was filled, but there was no one in the parking lot. When I turned to head towards the door, there was no one moving around inside that I could see from there. My stomach dropped. Something was wrong. Mm. So find out what the fuck is going on in Target, Owingsville, Kentucky, next, next week. Fuck. Which will be our Hall uh, Halloween. Christmas special. Yeah, we're going to do a two-parter. It's for, very exciting. For Crimbo. Shall we do a Creep of the Week? Yeah, you got, creep of you the got week. one. I'll get one. No, just leave me the fuck alone. Why's everyone emailing me? Um, okay, this is from... Hey, where do I... Can I mail that? Let's, let's do our little I'll jingle. The first one. Oh, yeah. Oh, Welcome the, to. Oh, no. <laughs> why? You, why? What is wrong with us? I know. Welcome to <gasps> Creep of the Week. 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 It's like the it's the Adams family, isn't it? That's the tune we do it to. I hope it's not trademarked. Why do you say that every time? That's part of the is jingle that what I say? now. <laughs> Uh, every time you're like, oh my god, that's how of something. I hope it's not trademarked. <laughs> it's like and I'm here, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're gonna have to. Whatever happened, right? Listen, whatever I've said on this episode, whatever's happened, you're gonna have to forgive me because I'm losing. Yeah, you're on the my edge. fucking mind. Yeah, and okay. that's okay. Okay, this is from Billy. Ooh, hi Billy. Hi ladies, absolutely love the podcast. I have a short, spooky, and true story for you. Oh my god, ellipses. Dot 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 dot. So this is a story from my dad from when he used to work at a children's care home in Birmingham in the 80s. My dad and one of the other ladies that worked in the home were taking a minibus of around 10 kids aged between 8 and 12 up to the Yorkshire Moors for a few days of camping. This was in early September of 1982. After a long drive, they eventually reached the sparse moors of North Yorkshire, just as the sun was starting to set. Ah, sounds gorgeous. Mm, gorgeous. It was quiet and peaceful, and they hadn't seen another car or, po or poison. <laughs> or poison? No, no people. <laughs> no people around. 
uh, ain't seen a car or person for at least half hour, at least half an hour of them driving. My dad and his co-worker then had the task of setting up all the tents for the children along with a larger communal tent. This sounds horrible and your dad needs a medal. Imagine setting up, I couldn't even set up one tent. I can't set up a tent, unless it's one that you can throw and then it just inflates. <laughs> <laughs> That's my kind of tent. Absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Um, yeah, I know what you mean. You know? That's yeah, that is my vibe. Whoever invented that should get a medal as well. I once went my dad. This, do you know embarrassing stories very quickly? I'm sorry to interrupt your story, Billy. But when we, we used to go camping all the time as children, and my dad once sent me to the to the corner shop, like on the te- on the campsite, for to get some new tent pegs. Um, and I was I really wasn't very old, like eight, nine, mm. something like that. But it was just over there, so it's like go over and get it. So I went in. and I was very like. Oh my god, these are adults and I don't know how to talk to them. And I was like, Can yeah. I have some tent pegs, please? And she was like, yeah, Of course you can, which ones do you need? She's been like really kind about it and I was like, oh, this, is right. this is going quite well. So I went back and my dad started absolutely pissing himself because she'd sold me a box of tampax. <laughs> but she was being so sweet. She was like, Of course, and I was like, the yellow ones, please. And I obviously just didn't know what tent pegs or tamp packs were. Oh, that's and he so just, oh, sweet. No, no, it just, I was like, and my mum was on the phone to everyone, be like, You'll never guess what's just happened. It's so, I was like, You can all get fucked. Oh, that's so embarrassing, though. Because you probably really hadn't started was. your period. No, I hadn't. I was like, oh I was my like, God, that's eight even or worse. nine. I know. It was like, it was so like, Ooh, and they just never oh. stopped. Talking about the whole thing. But that time is around. hilarious. As a parent, it's, I would can, be like. Can I have some tampons, please? Can I have some tampons, please? You can see exactly where I'm. She like the jumbo ones. <laughs> <laughs> the big How pluggers. About the fucking nappies to go with it. <laughs> it's like you've fucking got a mattress between yeah. your legs. <laughs> oh. Anyway, Billy, I'm so sorry. Sorry. Um, book. Okay. Um, whilst they were busy setting the tents up, the children went off to go and play a game of hide and seek. After around 45 minutes, one of the girls came back to the van crying. She said she was hiding in the dense heather and undergrowth of the moors when she heard a voice growl, I'm going to fucking kill you. That's Jesus. Scary, my dad's co-worker tried to calm the girl down and my dad reassured her that it was just going to be James messing around. James was a troublesome 11-year-old who enjoyed winding the other younger kids up and getting a rise out of them. And this was not uncommon behaviour for him. I was a James. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. The girl then waited with the adults while they finished setting the tents up until my dad called the rest of the kids in to sit down in a large tent for some hot chocolate as it was getting far too dark. Almost pitch black with the lack of light pollution in the area. James ended up getting told off by my dad for upsetting the girl, but he denied the accusation as per usual for him. Once everyone was cosied up inside the tent and slipping on their slipping on their hot chocolates... I'm so sorry, Billy, that it had to be today I read your story because I sound like a fucking idiot. <coughs> Once everyone was cosied up inside the tent and sipping on their hot chocolate, talking about their plans for tomorrow, a man's voice growled loudly from just outside the tent. I'm going to fucking kill you. Oh my God. Everyone panicked. My dad looked at James, sat across from him, and he, and he, he just looked pale. Both adults, adults rushed the kids back into the minibus, quickly scanning the surroundings with a torch for the man they heard outside the tent, but the moors remained as empty as they were when the group arrived. Not a soul in sight. They left the tents where they stood on the dark, damp moors and drove all through the night back to Birmingham in silence, and my dad refuses to ever go back there to this day, over 50 years later. Hope you enjoyed my story, Billy. Oh my God. That sounds like, mind you, how do you know that all the water, oh, I suppose they're very flat, aren't they, Moors? Yeah. Very flat. Uh, my only, my only may, maybe explanation. Cool. Yeah, it hit, hit me. Um, is that it was de rigueur. Excuse me. To um, record on your little tape player. Uh, so, do you know what I mean? Like maybe James was pl- going. Oh, it hit, ca- that's a good shout, hit actually. Hit play on his tape. That's a really good because shout. Because then you yeah. can be like, wasn't me? Because I, re- yes. I remember someone pranking me with walkie talkies as well. Oh, and I've, because yeah. I've been, I've been a victim of this prank oh, where the, no. the walkie talkie was placed in the closet and um, horrible, like eerie classical music was played. And like, I clicked. That's horrific. Well, I was with two other girls in the um, room. We were doing like this theatre show in the middle of nowhere in this haunted house, and we were right at the top of the room. And the boys had put like a walkie-talkie in our closet. I clicked just as I clicked when it because we were like screaming. This girl who was one of the stage managers, she like she was not happy, not a happy bunny, and she thumped 
the guy who had done it. Oh we were, my like, god! We, you know how people react differently when they're afraid. Yeah, no, I. Do I was that. like, I was thrilled that I was yeah. so scared. So I was like, like manically laughing. Yeah. She was fucking fuming yeah. that they'd made her that scared, and she fucking decked him. He went flying. And I was like, okay, okay, this is why pranks, you need to be really fucking careful. And, and she was like... Was she scared or did she, she do was, she was mad? She was terrified, but she was angry that she'd got so terrified. Oh, right, so it wasn't her reaction like, this is someone coming to fucking get No, me. no, so no, like, no, no. Oh. She was like, I'm like, fucking dead! Because oh, she I was see. screaming and like, right, eyes were watering because she was so oh. scared. And I was I like... Know exactly, I know exactly how that yeah. feels though, because I I would probably react. It was so funny. I, I was being scared howling. Of the moment. But yeah. if someone catches me off guard, yeah, I it was re- it was a really well done prank. But I was like, oh, you little shit! Were you really what? scared at the moment? Oh yeah, but I, like, I, I, I love it. being scared. So I was like, <gasps> I know. Yeah, it is weird. I'm yeah, so but, glad yeah, they but, pranked me like that. Yeah, but what about if it was like actual like monsters and ghouls? Well. And your life was on. But the that's line. what I mean. That, like James sounds like a little shit, and maybe did play walkie talkie. I think it was probably James. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's oh. very exciting. Thanks so much, Billy. Um, oh. Well. Okay, time has come. For we get haunted, so you don't have to. Do you have anything? I have. Oh my god! Wait for me. Right. Okay. Hang on. I need to turn. I'll turn the lights off. Uh, just whack one of them. Okay. Whack the light whack. off. Whack. Let's see if the uh, have a fiddle. I think it's the one at the bottom. Okay. Okay. You're going to do a spell Ooh. that makes that gets a um. That makes a ghost appear in a photograph. I'm going to take of you. Oh, lovely! So we're gonna. I'm going to tell you the spell, okay. and then I'm going to take the photograph. Okay. Okay. Let me find it. Let me find the spell. Jesus, what if I do see something? I'm turning into such a witch. You are so witchy. I'd love to go to witch school or something. Well, that is a thing, isn't it? Yeah, I want to go really bad. I want to go. If anyone has anyone been to witch school, can you please let us know and um. Come back to us, please. That'd be so great. Thank you so much. Blow out, Anna. What? That's spooky. <laughs> spooky, spooky, spooky. Where the fuck is it? Um. Okay, you have to chant this. Okay. Okay, you have to chant it three times. We're going to take a photo, and I'm going to try another three and see it, see if it happens. Okay, okay. Okay, so the God of the Dead... The God of the dead binds thee to me. The God of the dead binds thee to me. It is now bound until you dismiss it. It is now bound until you dismiss it. I know that's part of the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> you said it in a way that was I like know. lyrics. And now you have to pick up a candle and count. <laughs> um, what was it again? The right, God- okay. So the God of the dead binds thee to me. The God of the dead binds thee to me. And then you can do that. Okay. So the God of the Dead binds these to me. So you've got to say it three times and then I'm going to take a photo. Okay. Then we're going to do it again. You ready? Yeah. The God of the Dead binds thee to me. The God of the Dead binds thee to me. The God of the Dead binds thee to me. Click. Okay, so hopefully in a minute we're going to have a look at that and that all, you know. You need to do flash. Do you think? I think for the next one, do. let's try this one. I think that will come up with something. Ready? Go. The God of the dead binds thee to me. The God of the dead binds thee to me. The God of the dead binds thee to me. Ah! <laughs> I'm fucking flat didn't work. Tech. Hang on, Hashtag on. tech. Our friend. <laughs> no, just didn't work. Okay, right, we're going to check. How do you feel? Okay, yeah, I feel really good. Oh, okay, nothing at all. Really? Uh, although it is a live photo, so maybe... Imagine, imagine oh, there's oh just... Oh my God, you look so spooky there. Do I? I'm going to take a photo. Look at this. <laughs> oh my God. That's fucking horrible. Jesus, I, I look like a man. Honestly, you do. I look, <laughs> like, like, to- I look, I look like Tom Ward. You, do you know what? You yeah. do a bit, yeah. It's my, it's my new choppy oh, fringe. No, su- no, listen, no, listen to me. What? I think this is what it's done. It's conjured the dead, but look at your teeth. What have I... Oh, fuck's sake, no. do they look brown? Susie, that is <laughs> What's probable. in my teeth? I think you've turned into the... Into is the, it because I had a creature. tuna sandwich? What have they got? I think you've turned into the creature. Look at that. Look at your teeth. Okay, thank you. Now I need Invisalign. No, because your no. teeth don't normally look like that. To be honest... They've got, they've got fucking fangs. <laughs> I'm a bit fangy, though, as a person. No, but no, they've, they've changed into fangs, all of them, Susie. <laughs> 
They don't want your normal teeth look like. Oh, God. That's quite bad. Do you reckon I need to go to no, Turkey? No, because... No, I've, that's why I'm freaked out, because you don't look like that. No, I need turkey teeth, Anna. I'm, I'm going to you know what, fucking actually, To be honest, I am going to go and get turkey teeth. You yeah. I, I look like Rod Shall Stewart and, and, and Tom Ward. Shall we go, try and get a toother? Yeah. Two for one? Yeah. I am going to go. So that's probably going to be the Honestly, truth. I'm going to get composite bonding or something. I'm going to get a full... I'm just going to get full veneers. I'm going to go full veneers. Uh, or implants, to be honest. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> So, I think there's a ghost in that picture. I do. And it me. Yeah. I think it's coming out of I your just mouth. look that is a that is a shocking photo of me. Shocking. That's horrible. Shocking. Yeah, it's good though. Fuck's sake. Yeah. So we'll post that on the Instagram so I thought I looked pretty. <laughs> but I don't, Kira. <laughs> Christ. So that's a very topical for that time of year. Mm. Anyway, thank you so, so much, everybody. Thank it's you. It's been gorgeous. Thank you again to Becky for the perfumes. Oh, you stunner. Thank you so um, much. And come come back next week, obviously, for our Christmas spash. We'll be there for you on the late afternoons when you're done with all your turkey and you're bored of your family. We might even we'll do an Instagram there. live on Christmas Day, Oh, we're guys. definitely going to do that. I think we should, just because... Christmas cheer. I'm so ready to do it. Battered and full of turkey. Yeah, I'm going to have... and shattered. I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah, haggard and tired. I'm going to have my champagne. Yeah, and let's do that. we're going to do an absolutely no, messy life. Um, okay, we'll see you next week. Thank you so, so much, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. We love you. Bye. 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 Bye.